Well, as things would be, I'm driving down the road and I look up in the hill and I go, that sure is an old looking house on an old looking estate. And I pulled over and lo and behold, look at this, Mount Prodigal circa 1690. And uh, it's a magnificent home. Uh, 1700 Mount Prodigal restored over time becomes a comfortable home for the rich family. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll transcribe some of this. The gentleman was kind enough to, uh, Charles Rich was kind enough to allow me to come on his property and take a peek at the house. And uh, we'll do a quick shot of it. It's a beautiful brick structure, just incredible. And they've got the cedar roof, which I'd like to have on my old cabin. Look at that, oh my goodness. That is really something. And I've seen this before uh, on Bacon's Castle where you have this uh, sort of where the base comes out further to pull that water away from, from the basement, I reckon. That's probably an old English thing. And you've got the pointed style of mortar on here. Really incredible. But, um, not, oh, look at that nice brick walkway. But anyway, we'll, we'll have a chat with um, Charles Rich. So a very kind gentleman out here in Gloucester. Seems like everybody in Gloucester is a little friendly. That's a good thing. <laughs> Mr. Rich, <laughs> yeah, it is a good day thing this day and time. I've found that uh, out oh, here okay. in Gloucester, it's been nice. So tell me about the property, sir. Well, my parents bought this farm in the late 60s. Oh, wow. And when my wife and I got married in the early 70s, it used to be a wooden addition behind this house. Oh, wow. We showed that off and built this brick addition. Oh, you nailed that brick addition to, to the style. To, to keep in the architectural of what the house was. Well done, sir. That's incredible. Of course, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. Sure. You can get that at the article. Absolutely. In, in, in the paper. But anyway, uh, we lived in this part for a few years till we started having raising a family. Yes, sir. And from the time we started on this until we got it completed as good as I could. Mm -hmm. Because I farmed for a living all my life. Yes, sir. It took us about 17 years. If I had money, we worked on a house, didn't have any money. So my wife knows that story very well. We're in the middle of an old uh, 1700s cabin that uh, everybody thought had burned down when no. the original owner moved. And we're just above the fall line in the other Native American that, where the Manahoics are. Oh, okay. So we may have something that's late, late, late 1600s, but we we're pretty sure that the original cabin would have been a patent cabin. I'm still working on it when I got time and money, but you oh. can bet the wife is whacking me across the head to tell me to hurry up. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this past spring and this summer and fall, my wife and I, we have put this farm in a conservation easement. Outstanding. Nice. You know, it will eventually go to my daughter. Oh, very good. Uh, but something as unique as this home and this land, I didn't want to take a chance on that would be growing a solar farm or 25 houses on this piece right. of property. Right. So That's yeah. really nice. A lot of people that put the um, conservation easement tend to do it just for tax purposes, but you're doing it for the integrity of the property. Right. That's impressive, right. sir. Right. 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 So that's really good to know. Can we walk around? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can walk around. Really, I, I'm really impressed with your attention to detail. And of course, you know, that cedar roof, that's period. That's just something else. And so was it a local uh, mason that managed to pull that work off? It was a, a, a black gentleman from over around Williamsburg. Well, he knew what he was doing. I, that. I worked with an architect in Richmond, uh, Clarence Huff. Yes, sir. And Clarence and Mars, Huff and Mars. They supervised, I guess, the building of this addition course out of good friend of mine, Mr. George Lambeth, mm -hmm. who was a prominent builder, and he had a building materials place right down at White Marsh for years and years and years. He's the one that told me it would be a crime not to try to put something in the back of this house that would match it architecturally. His only downside to that is anything that's old, it's going to cost about two and a half times as much right. to redo it. Yeah, it'd uh, been cheaper to buy a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But anyway, we 
he made a sketch I took out to Mr. Huff and he drew up the designs and tried to match the addition to what the old was. Well, they nailed it from a, I mean, I'm not a, a historical uh, architect, but from my observations of things, you've done more justice to this than they did to Bacon's Castle, if you've been out there. Right. It's it's kind of piecemeal. Like, I'm looking at your chimneys now. Is, there, is that a three-flue chimney? That's a very interesting chimney design. It's a, it's a two-flue. Two-flue, okay. Upstairs at each end of this old house. Yes, sir. It was two small fireplaces. Right. Downstairs, there was two large fireplaces. Oh, wow. That's the first time I've seen a chimney that kind of stages out like that. That's okay. nice. Okay. So they're all independent from the ground up. Right. So original well? Uh, yes. yes. Nice. That, that's a brick well. See, there you go. They were close to the house so you didn't get yeah. shot by the Indians yeah. when you went out yeah. to get some bath water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, that's pretty neat. I managed to find the old well in mine after the earthquake came a few years back okay. the ground dipped out where the well was okay. and so i went out and looked at it but you're um how many years are on those cedar uh shakes up there well they're cypress cypress okay cypress. i'm gonna say that roof has been on that for 15 years it's supposed to last 50 years wow Kerry shackleford i don't know if you ever heard of him no, or sir not, but boy shackleford's a common one name. time he uh, did a lot of work in Colonia Williamsburg. So he knows the dr he knows the drill. And, uh, Looks like lead flashing up there. I reckon. Maybe not. Maybe aluminum. No, that's aluminum right in the chimney. Yeah. You know, you're uh, corbeling on the chimney. I got to zoom in on that. So that's always a big conversation. Did you have to do much chimney work? Uh, we've done very little since I've been here. So that could be the original chimney maintained, perhaps. Yes, that's in really that good shape. That's nice. Wow. You no, know, when I first started doing something with this house, it was all they used to whitewash a brick. Yeah, kind of. Lime. Yep. Lime so wash it. Yep. I took muriatic acid and a brush and cleaned most of all these bricks off. But when I got up on that. I had scaffolding in a wagon, and the whole work come here falling over with me on top of it. I said, "That's oh stay like, lord, that's where I stay like it is." Yeah, well, it's um, it's kind of nice to see the original finish. I've got they they have all these different kind of joints on them, and what I've got they dyed. Did you see any dye? I noticed there was a white line dye over the brick on the other side. I'm wondering. Yeah, that's it. And sometimes you see oyster shells as you get closer out into some of it. Kind of neat. Wow. That wall's in great, great shape. You haven't had any foundation settling or anything. No. Really nice. Well, somebody knew what they were doing. Well, thank you for your time, sir. Okay. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Okay. It's nice, everybody. You know, history matters. It's as important. Uh, history's as important as today, I would argue. It's really oh, good yeah. to keep oh, it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you again, sir. I appreciate it. Molly Patriot. Keep your kids uh, informed. Uh, let them know what uh, what's out there. Really a sight to behold. Thanks again, folks. Thanks for tuning in.